So, so several new variants have been identified out of India, and today I saw the news that the B1617.2 or the Delta variant appears to be now the dominant variant spreading through the UK, so I thought it was worth kind of looking into. I hadn't really looked into the variants coming out of India until today. But since this is now the dominant strain in the UK, which means it's much more transmissible than the B117 variant, um, it's likely to become the dominant variant in uh, America and possibly worldwide as well, because the dominant variant in America currently is the B117 variant. The one that I've been most concerned about is the beta variant or the B1351 variant out of South Africa. That's the one with the most amount of immune escape, but that hasn't become the dominant strain, so maybe it's not as transmissible. This Delta variant happens to be, looks, appears to be more transmissible and also has immune escape. Um, there's a couple of papers published. Uh, uh, they're in preprint right now, so I'll review them here. This is um, a paper talking about the reduced, reduced sensitivity of this variant, and there is um, a family of these variants, the B1617 family. There's, there's a subtype 1, 2, and 3. And the one we're interested in is this, this, the dot 2 subtype. And here's the dominant mutations in this subtype that are important in the um, spike protein. There are several mutations in the N-terminal domain. This is uh, what's traditionally thought of as the front end of the protein or the N-terminus. There's an N-terminus and a C-terminus. Um, and the at the N-terminal domain, there's a couple of um, mutations centered in the central area. That is thought to be really important because this is a dominant epitope, or this is one of the places where neutralizing antibodies um, recognize this part of the N-terminal domain. Then in the receptor binding domain, there are mutations at uh, 478 and 452. So this 452 um, is also found in other variants. This um, 478 is kind of a new mutation. The one that we've seen before in the P1 and the 351 uh, variants is this uh, E484, and it was K at that time, but now this is Q in the in the Indian variants. This subtype doesn't have that mutation, but has a very close one, and this probably um, helps in immune escape. Then this is the D614G. This is common in all, almost all the variants. So if you look across here, these are the variants of concern by the European Union. Um, and they've started labeling them alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Alpha, which um, refers to the UK variant. Beta, which rec uh, refers to the South African variant. Gamma, which is the Brazilian variant. And delta now, which is the Indian variant. So alpha, beta, delta, gamma. If you look at these, um, you'll notice that uh, this there's several um, mutations that are conserved throughout the variants. Like the 501 position, you see it on, in the alpha, the beta, and the gamma, and then you see in the uh, you see the 484 position in both the beta and the gamma, and then the the KN4 the K417N the K417T that's that's uh, found in the beta and the gamma, and what you notice is that the 614 is present in all of them. This this increases um, transmissibility. But the Delta has kind of new um, mutations which haven't been seen in the previous variants, which is a little concerning because one of the hopes was that there would be convergent mutation and there wouldn't be any new mutations forming. But um, this is showing some new mutations which haven't been seen before. So it looks like there are some other possible mutations which may um, increase the functionality of the virus, which has not, um, which we haven't encountered until now. Okay, so what we want to basically what we want to know is is this thing more transmissible? Is it more dangerous? And do the drugs that we have for it work on this? And do the vaccines we have for it work on this? So this one is looking at reduced sensitivity of this variant to monoclonal antibodies and sera from convalescent and vaccinated individuals. So what they did in this paper is they they isolated this variant and then they tested it against the monoclonal antibodies. These are drugs that we use. Um, 
most of the um, engineered drugs that we use for this thing are monoclonal antibodies. And then they took blood with antibodies from people that had the disease before, so that's convalescent serum, and then people that have been vaccinated. And so let's just skip all this. I, re I read over this, but we can just kind of get to the meat of the thing. Okay, so here's what, here's what we want to know about the vaccination. So if you look at this vaccination, um, this cutoff is kind of like the dotted line that says, you know, if you're above, if you have more than this, you, you're probably going to be protected. If you have less, you're probably not going to be protected. Um, this is just an arbitrary line that they drew. I mean, it could be a little higher, it could be a little lower. But what you notice is that eight weeks after vaccination with the Pfizer vaccine, um, almost everyone is protected, but the uh, the beta variant or the 351 South African variant is less. And then 16 weeks later, the, the 351 has fallen off. And this one is not as good. The 617 or the Delta variant is not as good as um, the UK variant or the original strains. Um, but it's still good enough. The AstraZeneca vaccine is not as efficient as the Pfizer vaccine, likely the same as the Moderna vaccine. And Johnson & Johnson is probably somewhere in between here. And then you see here that um, these are the different antibodies, the monoclonal antibodies. And th the most commonly used one is the this Bamla Ninevab um, in, in America, and it, it doesn't work very well against this vaccine. It drops off pretty severely. Okay, yeah, where is the... Yeah, you see here with this, the um, Delta variant is in, is in a tan, and it is not it is not neutralized well at all, and neither is the uh, UK variant. I mean the uh, South African variant. So those two are not um, does not work very well. Uh, this drug, etizivimab, seems to work pretty well, and uh, the rest of them seem to work pretty well. But this is the one that I think is the most commonly used one in America right now, and that one doesn't work. Um, this is another paper um, out of, this one's out of the UK, and they, this is a pretty important paper. They looked at the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines against this uh, Delta variant. And this is pretty interesting, is they found that two doses were very effective. Um, let me see if I can get down to any graphs. Okay, no, it's just wording here. So what they did here is um, they looked at how many of these people that had been fully vaccinated or half vaccinated, so they had one dose in the UK, um, were getting this um, Delta variant. And so they said that with two doses, they, um, They, it was still highly effective against uh, the B117, and then it was still effective against B or the, against the Delta variant. So 90%. That's pretty good. Uh, this is the AstraZeneca vaccine. That's 66% to 60%. But then when they had only one dose, um, it was only 33% effective. So this is interesting because against in the original. Um, case studies against original phase three trials, one dose was very effective against the original wild type um, virus. This is probably because it generated so much, um, it generated enough vax, uh, antibodies with one dose that it was highly effective against the wild type strain. But since the effectiveness is much less against these new variants, the, the one dose um, antibody uh, load wasn't enough to to be effective whereas with two doses it's so much higher so like you know if this is 
the amount of um, antibody that you need um, to be effective. One dose gave you like this much with, against the wild type and um, like this, like way more uh, against the, uh, by the second dose. But against the um, new variant, you need like this much. And so one dose gets you here and two doses get you up there. So the threshold is a little higher. You just need more of the antibodies because a certain percentage of them aren't going to work. But if you just have enough, you can just overload the system and still be effective. So it looks like against these variants, two doses is still effective, um, but one dose is not effective. So I think the take-home point here still is the 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 variant with the most immune escape still looks like it's the beta variant or the South African variant. The um, Delta variant is it has some form of immune escape, but it's still the current um, at least the Pfizer vaccine is very effective uh, with two doses still. So it should be um, protective against this variant. The concerning thing about this one is it does seem to be highly transmissible. So we're more likely to run into this one. Luckily, uh, the vaccines seem to be still effective against this one. And luckily, um, the South African and Brazilian variant have been around um, in community spread for a while and is not the dominant um, variant. So it means that the UK variant and likely this Indian variant is going to outcompete it, which in a way is good because it's not as... Um, uh, it doesn't escape the vaccine as much. As more people get vaccinated and there's more selection pressure, it may happen that the, um, the variants that have more immune escape um, get a selective advantage. So anyway, I will link um, these three papers in the description. The last interesting thing I found is that evidently there is a very recent variant as of a few days ago that is basically the Delta variant with an additional K4117N mutation, which if you look at this, that is the mutation that's present in the beta and the gamma um, variants. So that additional um, mutation probably will help with immune escape even more, and that would be problematic. So if we have something that is highly transmissible, like this Delta variant, yet has the um, has similar immune escape properties as the beta variant, uh, that could be bad and that would mean that we would need a booster um, to cover these, uh, cover the mutations in this new variant um, pretty soon to avoid another huge surge probably late summer or in the winter. Um, so we'll just have to keep a watch on that and find out what happens.